welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And today's big thank you is to Christopher Mott, who has been hanging in behind the camera now for 300 plus episodes, at least Mott, right? 400 plus episodes. Mott, I thank you very much for being my companion on this journey thank of you. vino. Um, three wines today in front of me, all with long shaped bottles, which is always a nice thing for the peeps out there. And uh, three very different kind of wines in price points, 29, 60, and 22. So running the gamut of price points, actually, it's a little sweeter. So let's do that little switcheroo action uh, at the end there. Um, what we're talking about today is Spätlese. Uh, the Spätlese wines, you wanna zoom in, this is the word you're looking for, are very interesting German Rieslings. Uh, Spätlese completely translate to, to late Harvest, uh, semi-sweet, really. Uh, the classifications of Germany in 1971 kind of set up some new standards. Um, Spätlese's uh, fall into the range of 30 to 60 grams of sugar per liter, so you're, you're seeing a, a high sugar count. Um, definitely not like an Ausschlese that gets even sweeter, but this is semi-sweet, unless you see the word Trocken. I don't want you to go out and try Spätlese and then see uh, the word Trocken means dry, so keep that in mind. Um, so we've got three different producers here um, that are Riesling Spätlese's. Uh, two are from the Moselle, um, these two right here, and one is from the Rheingau. Uh, so very interesting wines, different stylistically uh, made wines from the producers in the past. This is an 06 and 06, and maybe an 06, yes. So these are 06s, I haven't had these vintages from any of the three, but three very solid, especially the last two are very well-known producers. Dr. Carl Christoffel starting to make a name for himself. And let's start with that right off the bat. We're starting with the Dr. Carl Christoffel, a Wellner Sooner uh, Riesling Spätlese, 2006 vintage, 29 US dollars, 8.0% alcohol content, low in alcohol content are a lot of these Rieslings from Germany, which makes them very easy to drink by themselves, summertime white wines, which I think are very fascinating and very exciting. 29 bones, let's give it a whirl, let's give it a sniffy sniff, because that's what we do on the Thunder Show. Very nice nose, uh, I get a lot of honey coming through on the nose, quite a bit, more than I'm a little bit accustomed to. I get a little bit of a limey component, so I get a little of like a, a tequila margarita action here, a little honey, like a honey flavored margarita coming through on the nose, to be honest with you. Because I almost do get a tequila like component on the nose. I do get a burnt rubber, like skin mark city on the nose as well, which is quite interesting. Very aromatic, very fresh. Um, you can really smell the honey on this wine, which is a little bit unusual for me. Very interesting, let's give it a whirl. Spätlese wines tend to be very um, complex, um, you know, semi-dry, um, semi-sweet, let me go that way. Um, tend to have very nice high acid flavors. This has a very nice golden apple dipped in honey with a squirt of lemon flavor on the palate, which I think is delicious. And really one of the better, more defined flavor profiles I've come across in a wine in a while. This really tastes like a golden apple dipped in a little honey with a lemon spritzer. I'm not kidding, it's delightful. Some nice minerality on the back end. I would love to pair this with some Thai food, Indian food, just getting back from India. Um, anything with spiciness, even some Chinese foods uh, with the high mustard. Um, very nice wine, very well made from the Moselle. Um, I like this wine. This is very fresh, very clean. I'm gonna score this wine 91 plus points. I find this to be a very solid Riesling. Textbook uh, completely delivers what a Spätlese brings to the table with that sweetness that's so defined yet not too gaudy or dessert-like. A very good effort from Dr. Carl Christoffel and a very good start to a show that I'm extremely excited about. While staying on excitement, huge happy 12th anniversary to Bo and Kim. Anyway, let's move on. Let's give a little rinse while I pronounce the next wine for you. Monkoff, 2006 Erzig Wurstgarten Riesling Spätlese, 22 US dollars. Frizzy, if you can see that, Mott, lots of frizz frizz, which is always fun for the kids. Um, and 92 points wine spectator. So very highly scored, 
um, Riesling Spätlese. Um, let's see what's going on here. We're a little round. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. 10% alcohol in this. Now this smells different. This more has more of a pear component coming through on the nose. Also, you know, like roasted pine nuts. You know what that smells like, Mont? Roasted pine nuts coming through on the nose, which I like quite a bit. There's also like a brown sugar component going on in this wine, which I like quite a bit. So take some uh, pears, slice them up, pine nuts, put it in a pan, start roasting them, put a little brown sugar on top. That's what this smells like. The palate is in tune. Maybe eating that cheese and meats, getting going, third taping that. I'm feeling my palate kind of zoning in, and I like what I'm smelling from this wine. Very good. Let's give it a whirl. A little sweeter than the last wine, very full, has a bigger body presence than the last wine. 10% um, alcohol in this one, it has a really nice richness, almost syrup-like on the mid palate. So there's a density factor to this Riesling that I think is quite sensational. The little hint of sweetness that's more than the last one is a little bothersome for me, but it really depends on your sweet tooth, right? To me, it's just a hair above where I like to see it. I still think this is exceptionally well made. The acid attack in the beginning is just phenomenal. Well played, well played, sir. Uh, let me give it one more whirl. Mm -hmm. That initial acid attack is great. Um, I, I, I like this wine. Again, pears are the dominant flavor more so than the apples on the last wine. Really well made. Pine nuts are coming through a little bit on the palate as well. Gets a little raisiny um, on the tail end as well, which is quite interesting. I'm gonna score this wine 90 points. I think it's extremely good. Another exceptional reasoning. A hair less exciting for me than the Cristoffel, but still a very well made and definitely has a little more oomph if you're looking to pack a little bit. Like a booty, you might like a little more to squeeze on. Um, that's the Moncoff for you. For me, the Dr. Carl Cristoffel, a little more lean, a little more tight. Um, but both very good wines, showing a lot of characteristics of minerality from the Moselle, very well put together wines, good start, once again proving why German Rieslings are at the top of their game, and now we're moving into one of the real spectacular wines um, made. And so what I really want to put the focus on is the term Spätlese, Spätlese, you know, not the best of pronunciation. The Spätlese, again, completely refers to late harvest. They are picked at least seven days after most of the stuff. Um, you're going to find sweet wines, and this is the man, uh, Robert Wiel. This guy is unbelievable. Robert Wiel is making some of the best German wines in the world. If you see the blue, beautiful blue and gold, you know you're in great shape. This is from the Rheingau Riesling. It's 2006. Uh, Ketterich Turbringer uh, Spätlese. Um, let's see what's going on here. This wine rolls in at 60 U.S. bones. And uh, let's see what's going on here. Rinse. German wines, Mott. I think you'd be a big fan of these. Oh, I like Riesling. You, I know you do. The sugar gets you every but time. There's something. There's something more to them. Well, so there's not, a lot more to them. It's just not sugar water. No, not even close. Let's give this a sniffy sniff. Now this is interesting. This also has a little bit of that petrol tirey component on the nose. This is the tightest of the bunch on the nose. Definitely not as aromatically explosive as the last two, but maybe shows a little bit more of that tightness and acidity and maybe refers to, listen, I'm looking to be put away for five to 10 years before you really want to open me. Okay, I'm sorry. I understand, but I can't do it for the Thunder Show. Is that okay with you? No, I like to be put away. It's okay, please. We need this for the Thunder Show. No, I don't care. But it's for education value. No, I don't care. But it's for entertainment value. Well, no, I don't care. I'm a Jets fan. Oh, me too. Oh, this Riesling is a Jets fan, so now they're going to allow me to taste it on the Thunder Show. Very nice. Like I said, tire component. Get a little apricots coming through here. Minerally. This is definitely more minerally. This has a little bit of that oyster shell, rock, bluestone thing coming through. Let's give it a whirl. An amazing citrus component on the back end of your palate. Right back here, right away when I pointed to it, I felt like, like beautiful sugared, like dipped in sugar, lemons and limes just being squeezed in the back of my palate, just gorgeous. I get a honeydew component here, maybe like sweet apricot syrup coming through. A 
little bit of that petrol action still coming through here, a little of that tire, petrol-y kind of thing you see in Rieslings, but this is really a story of lemons and limes meeting apricots and, uh, and, uh, and peaches. You know, it's just, this is a very beautiful bottle of Riesling, very sticky, um, medium body compared to the Monkhoff being the heaviest body. This wine rolls in at uh, eight and a half percent alcohol content. Very complex, the acidity is ripe and high. Very ripe bottle of Riesling. Very, very focused, um, really polished, elegant. I like this a whole lot, but not spectacularly higher than the last two. I've gotta admit the complexities in the back end palette are much more defined, and you can feel that this is a much more serious bottle of Riesling than the last two wines. Though I'm only gonna score 92 points. I think it's got enough to go there, but as you can tell, I don't think it's really going so much up and above and beyond the other two. And I wanna actually go back to Dr. Carl Christoffel at this point. I get enough of these. A lot of fun tasting these. Yeah, the Dr. Carl, the least sugarified, but really has its 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 act together. Three spectacular Rieslings. 90, 91, 92, Mott. I can't remember the last time we put out a show that had three 90-point wines in a row. Basically, we batted three for three. The price point of Rotter Veal, you know, at 60 bones might throw off some people, but all in all, it's been a long time since we batted 1,000 on the Thunder Show. This is a clear indication of the quality of the producers that we put on today's show, the quality of Riesling Spatlis, the, the the fact that my palate likes Spatlis wines with that little bit of, a little more of that sugar con- content, um, the fact that I'm eating more spicy foods, that Thai, Indian, kind of Malaysian, you know, Vietnamese foods that I've been drawn to in the last 24 to 36 months. These wines really pair in that zone. I'm really hopeful that you go out and you now understand the Spätlese word that you see means a little bit more sugar. Ausschlese means even a little bit more. But if you see that word trocken, you know you're going dry. Maybe you can write down some of these little fun points. Text yourself. Makes you a little more prepared, a little more aimed, a little more ready to buy a German wine or try a German wine the next time you go out. Good show. Good content. Question of the day. German wines. What's the last one you had? And if you haven't had one, what are you waiting for? You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether Mott likes it or not.